Welcome in to Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Uh, We're excited today. A lot of you have sent requests on things you'd like to see us do. Uh, and one of those, Bubba, is a little segment we call Where Are They Now? Uh, which would be talking to members of the Rick and Bubba team that were with us for many, many years uh, and uh, now, sadly, are not with us but doing you know other things. Uh, and today, Bubba, we talked to probably – one of the most well-known former members of Team Rick and Bubba, but once a member of Team Rick and Bubba, always a member. Uh, yep, yep. And, and that, of course, is Don Juan DeMarco Williams. Don Juan, thanks for joining <laughs> us. How you doing, buddy? Hey, guys. How we doing? How we doing? Or now it's just, it's DeMarco. <laughs> DeMarco, yeah, you know. <laughs> well, I, you know, I was uh, I didn't know what we were going to do during this segment, but I'm ready for body jam if you got time. I yeah. mean, I'm hey, ready to go. Hey, I can uh, some high knees and some jumping jacks anytime. I'm ready to break out into it. <laughs> boy, boy we, I'll tell you one thing. You'd be, you'd be frustrated taking your, your old buddies Rick and Bubba through body jam. I, I'll yeah, tell you what. You <laughs> I, I love getting a random message from Bubba saying, "Hey, don't start class yet. I'm looking for my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> looking for my shoes." So, D, uh, I love I love when I see that you've got some big event going, and you know you're you're doing the PR stuff, which you ought to do, and and uh, I love seeing what you're doing. But I gotta, I knew that you'd love it if I gave you a little comment. <laughs> That or don't start without me. Yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll get into that. But you know something, D, and I know the veterans are loving hearing your laugh again. But you know, did you ever think? Look, what if you were walking through the studio in the years you were here, and I and I pulled you off to the side and said, "Hey, one day we're going to have you come in on something called Zoom, and we're going to talk to you on something called a podcast." That, 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 hey, I never would have thought it. <laughs> I don't, hey, we didn't know. We, like, we what? you didn't. If, if I if podcast had been brought up in your era, none of us would have known what we were talking about. Yeah, <laughs> no, right? We didn't even know Zoom was going to work till we had a pandemic. I know. Well, that's true. Hey, so yeah, yeah. I love it. We're gonna we're gonna get into you know how it all started and and then kind of get updated on Don Juan DeMarco Williams. But I, I do want to point to this Tommy John. Uh, I'm telling you, I, you know, and I, I'm I'm a dude. We're all dudes, and sometimes dudes just don't even care about underwear, and we just think whatever underwear packet, you know, we <laughs> it was in our drawer when we left home. That's still our underwear we take with us. And you remember Bubba when Tommy John said, "Hey, can we send y'all some underwear and just put it on and and just stay with us? You're going to notice a difference. It could be better." And, and Rick, we, it was life changing. I, I didn't know one that there was underwear out there that didn't have holes in them to begin with. Yeah, yeah. And well, then, and then the way it fit and it, the way it moved, and uh, you know the breathability of it all—it was incredible. Well, you, you think D didn't have a pair on right now? I mean, I mean, look, he, 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 absolutely. He, he was so away. He was asking us why we weren't wearing them. But anyway, you you did touch on it. Look, let's face it, guys. We're we're all from the south. Summers can be brutal where Ooh. we live. But any anywhere you are, if you're listening to this or watching the podcast, summer is coming. I know our spring was pretty mild, but summer is coming uh, in a very big way. Some of you already are in climates that are very hot. Well, Tommy John's ultra-breathable underwear, like Bubba just talked about, and for the women, even bras they have now, they've got a range of summer-ready breathable options, but their cool cotton underwear, which is what I love for men and women, is like having your own body air conditioning uh it's uh, it's cool cotton made from premium natural uh cotton for the enhanced airflow it evaporates sweat super fast keeps you drier and cooler and more comfortable than regular cotton did, did y'all know have you ever heard of pima cotton p-i-m-a you know i just like the term advanced airflow yeah yeah we all we all like that so if you want to upgrade today they also have uh you know uh, wonderful t-shirts and polos if you've never tried those either uh but you can upgrade to tommy john today with these enhanced designs that are super breathable and more comfortable than than anything else out there it's not even close uh and uh, how about this tommy john is so confident in their underwear that you don't have to love your first pair you can get if you don't if you get them say you know what rick and bub and d were talking about it i don't think they're that great that's not going to happen, but if you feel that way, maybe it's a personal preference, you get a full refund with their best pair you ever wear or it's free guarantee. Tommy John, no adjustment needed. Now, for a limited time, go to TommyJohn.com slash Rick Bubba. We're going to get you 20, 20% off Bubba site-wide, everywhere on the site, no matter what you get. If you use the code Rick Bubba, 20% off. That's TommyJohn.com slash Rick Bubba. Uh, see the site for all the details, 20% off. All right, so Don Juan DeMarco Williams uh, is with us today on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. So, D, we go back. 
the Rick and Bubba University uh, intern program, which if you're you know, new to the program, that's what we call our, or we do now, our intern program. So you w- became an intern on the Rick and Bubba show, and, and I know we're all getting older. Can you remember the date, the year? Number three. It was uh, the year 1996. Um, I graduated high school in 1995, so 1996 was my first year with you guys uh, as a part of the show as an intern. And I was a clueless, young, dumb teenager that had no clue what was going on, but hey, (laughs) <laughs> it turned out to be awesome with you guys. So, so did you, you remember? Ha- do you remember which intern you were? Uh, I was intern number three. Yeah, that's what I thought. Boy, intern who, number three. Wow. Who was before you? Do you remember? There was a uh, uh, Louis, yeah, and then there was uh, there was Aaron Boy, right? Aaron Boy and Louis, and, um, and I came on in there number that was number that, three. That was quite that, a quite a bunch to follow up, D. I mean, I had no clue. I was way out of my element. I'm like, what's going on? I mean, day one, you guys had me in uh, in, in another radio station trying to sneak in, and we were good. <laughs> Pete the Pot Belly Poker Blame Pete was there, and I'm like, what's what's going on? You know, D, I think I think you're making a, a, a point, and I've heard you know Cassio Kid made, and we did the Rick and Bubba, you know, 20 year tour. Uh, which you did a great job on that too. He made the comment, you know, that he was an intern during what a lot of people called the funny years. Funny years, uh, but 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 I, which was funny, very funny. On that set. was very funny. May have been the line of the whole time. <laughs> yeah, but 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 do you ever think? And I know every now and then the interns will get together, but you see these interns that we have now, or you just see the guys that are on the show now. You were part of the era of establishing a brand. It was one thing once it's already been established. But we were all just a bunch of, hey, we're here. Uh, Nobody knows who we are. We're trying to get noticed. We're trying to make a brand. Do you agree that that these people that work on the show now are are interns now? Because you did both. You worked as a part of the team, and you also were an intern. They don't realize how much more civilized and mild the Rick and Bubba experience is now than the early days. I mean, we were rowdy. That, that that is correct uh but it was a, it was a process and i love seeing the it's almost like the beginning stages of a project you're working on something you're building something you're creating something and then to see the final project of what it becomes so i love seeing where you guys are now and and all the years in between getting to where you are now knowing you know where we started in that little box, little tiny box room, answering the phones, you know, screening right beside, you know, it was just completely different. And, and seeing all the growth throughout the year, it's, it's been amazing to see that. And and, and I know that I'm, I'm just so happy to be a part of it. Yeah, you you watched us, you know, that those early days where, in, like you said, y'all could, we could be asked to do anything. We'd, we'd go into another, uh, you know, show, studios, companies. We'd, we'd, we'd take people's billboards and make them our own. Uh, and uh, so when you when you decided to intern, and, I, and I'm trying to remember the story, were you familiar with the show at all? Nobody really was that familiar with it because it was so new. Did, or did you just well, looking for something to do for school credit? Actually, it was actually for school credit. I actually uh, began an internship mm-hmm. with another radio station in Birmingham, and that did not work out at all for me in my favor. Uh, but it was uh, one of those cases where I needed to do an internship with the radio station not caring what show or what type of radio station. I just needed to do an internship for a grade. And it turned out to be uh, the start of my life, you know? Yeah. So I, I was uh, happy that I got with the Aaron boy, and he uh, told me about you guys and, and said, hey, just call Speed Racer. You know, call Speed. <laughs> and I'm like, who is that? Yeah, right. That's his name? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's his name. Call him up. And, uh, and, and, and then Speedy allowed me to come on down and I uh, intern with you guys. And, and, you know, you were an immediate hit, and that's why you ended up working with the show. And uh, we had a lot of fun. We were heartbroken when you left, too. I mean, that uh, <laughs> we were like, oh, D, don't leave, man. You're breaking up the team. Yeah, so, so yeah, take us, take us through the times you were here. Do you have anything, anything that stands out? Like if somebody says, hey, tell me what it was like during your time of Rick and Bubba. What are some of the things that you remember that really stand out? Well, I have to say there's, I don't, I, I can't, I can't find anything negative to say, you know, when it comes to my time doing the show, everything, every moment, every day was a bunch of laughter, foolishness, goofiness that that's, that's right up my alley. You know, everything was great. It was amazing. Um, so 
my time doing the doing the Rick and Bubba show was all about laughter, fun, uh, and that it allowed me to grow and build as a grown man. Being with you guys and you know watching you guys and seeing how you guys handle business and see how you you know work professionally in the field and it's just it was awesome because there wasn't a day that went by that I did not want to be there. Like I, if I was sick, you guys had to make me go home. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I, I didn't want to. I didn't, I didn't want to not come in. I always wanted to be there, you know? So it was one of those cases where every single day was, was, was joy for me being there with you guys. So it was amazing. So D, how old are you now? I am the whopping drum roll, please. 43 years old. And Did you like say 43? Three. Yeah. Oh I'm my 43. Gosh. Wow. And, and, and That's I, don't, unreal. I, don't, I don't feel it. And I don't understand. Like is, is the numbers off? Let me look at that birth certificate. Let me see that. You know, it's one of those things where are you sure I'm 43? But I am 43 years old. Well, well, trust me, 50s out there. It'll yeah. you, it'll get you. <laughs> you know what you just reminded me, D? I didn't realize how young we all were, because <laughs> because I'm 55. So you're sitting there thinking I'm looking at you as a guy coming out of high school, and I'm really only 12 years older than you. You know, so so really, <laughs> we were all really young. I mean, that, that yeah. was a pretty young team. Young. Yeah. Very young. Yes. Yeah. So and at so, that moment, at that time, I didn't have a direction. I really didn't know what all I wanted to do in life. I had no clue. I just knew I, I wanted to do radio and TV. But what does that entail? How does that how do I get into that? I don't know. Let me just try something. You know, I just was told that you got to go to college. You got to do this. You got to do that. And and I did it. And I looked up and got into the right hands. And you, you guys uh, kind of led me through the way. <laughs> So I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, but you you know, you also there's certain things that nobody can teach you. I, I can't make somebody have a good work ethic. I mean you can't. You can't you can't say, Hey, you don't have a good work ethic and I'm gonna make you have one. You know, right. I say that all the time. If someone doesn't have a good work ethic, I mean you can put all the opportunities in the world in front of them and it's not gonna amount to much. So you also came in with the right attitude, you knew that you, you might not have known, like and none of us, I don't think, did, the details of what you were going to do, but you knew that if you could just, somebody could get you rolling in the right direction, I felt the same way. Man, just give us a shot that, that, that we were going to work. We were going to be there. We weren't going to sit around. We weren't going to be, uh, you know, uh, you know, unreliable. I mean, I can tell you one of the things about this show, and Bubba, I know you can back that up with you and with Speedy, and it continues today. Bubba and I are not really – we don't hover over anybody. Uh, once we make you a member of the team, we give you a, a ton of responsibility, and then we just walk away and consider it handled. And we've been fortunate. We've, you know, Like in your case, we picked the right person. I don't remember ever having to come behind you and say, hey, why, isn't this, why, 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 why hadn't this been done? Or what about this? Everybody – it was a bunch of self-starters that were ready to work outwork anybody anytime. And that makes a great team. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's real funny you say, Rick, about university. I'm actually taking some university classes right now on in business. All right. um, and um, so it's one of those things where it's like a lot of the stuff I'm learning and I'm, I'm reading about, it's like, oh, I learned that from Rick and Bubba back in the day, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's one of those things where for me, um, it wasn't in a textbook. It wasn't in a class. It was it was actually real life experiences of uh, being part of the team and building the team and working for the team and doing what it takes to to stay in the number one position and and all those things combined helps build a person and and that's exactly what it did for me. Well, and you you had a great sense of humor too, and I think it matched up <laughs> yes, with everybody sir. on the show, and we all like <laughs> to laugh. So, but D, tell us. Let, let's move forward. We may come back to this, but let's move forward. What what are you doing now? Um, what am I not doing now? Actually, I'm, I'm <laughs> taking on, and you, and you guys know for years, I'm always taking on multiple roles. Oh, you know, yeah. I'm, all, I'm, right. I'm this, I'm that, I'm over here and I'm doing this. And that hasn't stopped. Um, that's one of the things that I said, I'm going to, when I get older, I'm going to settle down more and, and, and try to, to focus on one thing. But right now I am still doing radio, uh, living in, I still with WSB, um, you know, doing pr production for radio shows and, doing all of that with multiple different shows. I'm still doing also television as well. I work for Sony Entertainment Television, uh, working mass control for them. And uh, also I'm working for LA Fitness as a uh, cardio jam instructor. So I'm doing a little bit of everything. I'm keeping it rolling, you know? Now, <laughs> I don't Dave, know when, how to stop and sit down. No. <laughs> we know WSB. We're familiar with it. What is Sony TV? What is that exactly? Um, Sony Entertainment Television, um, it's a network. Now, you don't get it in the States. I work for the Latin American division. Of course, that, I went in and they thought that I was I was Latin. 
And okay. Uh, sure. You know, whatever they say. And, and, and saw the look and they thought, Hola, DeMarco. Right. Hola. <laughs> and I'm like, just give me a heads up. I don't speak Spanish, but uh, yeah. but I was <laughs> fortunate enough to, uh, to, to be hired by uh, Sony Latin America uh, channels. And I um, do mass control for all their networks. Wow. So now, how do you make all this work? So uh, let's go to the, the LA Fitness because that's where Body Jam comes from. So <laughs> are, how much of your entrepreneurial spirit? Is it pretty much, hey, hey, DeMarco, you have your brand and you have your classes. Go make it work, and they take they take a percentage. Uh, but other than that, you're an independent contractor. How does that work? We're thinking I, about I, I starting work. our own uh, workout, DeMarco. You can tell. You know, hey, we're trying to understand hey. the business model. Yeah. <laughs> and believe it or not, everybody's uh, trying to get me to branch off and do my own thing. But I, I actually I work for LA Fitness, and I come in. And I just perform a class that keeps people coming back to the gym. So as far as uh, cardio jam, it's one of those things where I teach at multiple locations and everybody's lined up ready for it. And, you know, we're in an unfortunate time right now where we're not able to have the full capacity of what I do. Uh, I'm used to having like tons and tons of people, you know, 80 plus people in a packed room and we're all sweating and burning calories and, and having a good time. Unfortunately, we're not able to do that right now during these times. And I'm kind of limited to 15 people per room. And it's, it's uh, so it's kind of it's putting, a, it's putting a damper on what I do, you know. Are you doing? It sounds like when I go to lunch over at Golden Corral. <laughs> <laughs> You're limited. You're very limited. Yeah. So Don Juan, let me ask you this. Yeah, here I go again. Here, here's that entrepreneurial spirit. Look, now we're all doing business. So, but did you jump into? Because I know a lot of people, like even the place where I try to do a little better, they they started offering. You can't come in. But, but then it got to where now some of you are here, but the rest of you can actually do it virtually. Do you, are you doing that? Now, that is a, that has been a request by a lot of my students um, to go virtual. And just to be completely honest, and I'm always honest with everybody when it comes to my classes, is I'm driven by the music and the people. Right. I'm driven and I'm fired up. I could, I could have a, a terrible day at work. I can have a headache, stomach don't feel like it's sleepy but when I get in front of the room with a packed room full of people and crank up the music I, I totally forget about that and I become a different person and and I'm always in that mode well it's kind of tough to get in that mode on a camera doing it through zoom or social media and so it's, it's hard it's hard to pick up chicks that way too right? <laughs> yeah, but hey, it, look, <laughs> it, it, it's completely it, you know it's different you know and it's not something that I'm like really really wanting to do um, cause I don't get the same feel from, it, you know, I love being in front yeah. of the, the people in the class. All right, here I go. Don Juan here. Just take this away. This could be a re- fine do that, but record the class with the 15 people and then make the archive of that available for anybody who wants to do it in the home. So you still have the in room experience, <laughs> but you archive it. And then just, just, just like Peloton does, you know, on that bicycle, they have live classes, but then they have archives you can go back and get. So you don't even offer the live stream because that's too big a hassle. You record it, and then you make your workout available for those. Record it live. Yeah, that, that, so you get the live experience. You just record that and then make that available either on some sort of L.A. Fitness you know, YouTube channel or your own YouTube channel. Right. I don't know how you, that works. How much? It's demarco.com. I mean, that's yeah. right. That's it. And, I, and, D, I was going to say, you're, you're doing a great job marketing yourself. I mean, oh yeah, they wanted you because of your following, and, and I've seen – believe it or not, some of your workouts. Uh, and, man, you got a crowd in there. I mean, you got a bunch of people. Hey, D, I walked in one day. I walked in one day, and Bubba was all set up and was looking at your class. I said, hey, man, what are you about to do? He said, I'm just sitting there eating chips watching Don Juan's class. <laughs> 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 I love to eat while I'm walk- watching a good workout, you know. <laughs> so but look, oh, and, and on a side on a side note, something that I never ever do, I don't know what it was, but I guess it was because I was going to be with you guys this morning. I just sat here and polished off for breakfast a bag of chips. Did you really? Yeah, I there don't you do go. that. Welcome back. I don't do that. Welcome back, D. Time to work out. Welcome back, D. <laughs> Uh, so the let's let's go back because I, I know the ones you know with this rick and bubba university there's new people but then there's veterans and and you know we, people ask us this on the air and we try to talk about it but let's go back to the moment you were with us from 96 to when how long uh 2008 okay so from 96 to 2008 so 12 None years can do the math 12 years 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Twelve years. So, uh, so twelve years of Rick and Bubba, and you were in a twelve-year period where a lot of things changed. I mean, you a lot of moves, a lot of different studios, and and you know we go from a closet to a little bit bigger, to a little bit nicer, to a little bit nicer, and then we finally get to where we have it just exactly the way we like it. And then there's that day when you said, "Hey, Rick, I need to talk to you." And uh, do you do you remember that day? Do you remember that day? I do. I do remember that day, and I and I have to say, um, I, you know, I haven't had a lot of difficulties in life uh, when it came to different situations and conversations and stuff. But that was a very very hard time, and it was a very very difficult time to to have that that interaction with you one on one to actually have that conversation. You yeah. know, some things it's just hard to talk about. You know, and yeah. One well, of those things where it's like. I need to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing because I want people to understand because you know how people people get out there and think, well, something must have happened. They they must have gotten rid of him. No, it really it was to, it was totally your decision. And so, kind of tell everybody why you made that decision at that point of your life. What what you you thought because you told me and you're a grown man and you handled yourself like a like a you know perfect gentleman and a responsible person and you handled it like a man. But you you tell kind of tell the audience because you know what they think. Why would you leave the Rick and Bubba gig? You know, know. And, and, and of course they think it's wonderful all the time. But you were you know I know all of us had gotten married and you were still young and. And, and you were ready to try some other things, but kind of let them hear it out of your mouth. Yes, exactly. And, and that was the, the 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 main question I got, you know, for the year, years afterwards. Like, why, why, where'd you go? Where'd you leave? Why'd you leave? Why'd you leave? Did they get rid of you? And what'd you do? And I'm like, no, it wasn't nothing like that. Uh, it was one of those things where, um, you know, in life, uh, you always – want to do other stuff you always have a desire to to do this and try this and try that and i was actually you know still young but i was still feeling like i was getting older i'm i'm getting older and um there are still some things that i like to do on my own there are some things i'd like to branch out and do and there was some some things that i was kind of held back from doing by being a part of you know the show in birmingham you know so me branching out going to another state or going here, going there, the show was kind of like it for me. That was pretty much it during my time on the show. I didn't have much time to do anything else or branch out and do this and that. So, you know, I said, well, one day, you know, and that was, of course, years before I actually left, but one day I'll do this. So one day I'll branch out to go do this. So one day I'll go down another path. And it, you know, it hit me one day. And it, was, it was shortly after a vacation I took. Uh, I took a vacation, I had taken a vacation like a you know, maybe sometime that same year and I was visiting some friends and I was, I was on a tour. I went from here to there to here to there. And I was visiting all these people and I was like realizing that so much life outside of Alabama for me. And I'm like, well, why don't I experience good stuff like this? Why don't I see stuff like this? And why don't I do this? I, you know, I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to do that. So instead, you know, one day you're going to have to just do it because you're getting, you're not getting any younger at all. You're becoming an old man by yourself sitting in Alabama. And that was one of the things I had to say, you know what? I want to do it. I want to, I want to branch out. I want to go do other things. I want to experience life outside of Alabama. And I felt like I was kind of in that stage of, you know, how you, you, you've been living with your mama for your whole life, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of felt like I've been at home, you know, with, with, with you guys under that same roof. And I kind of wanted to, let me just, I want to branch out. I want to get out. And, and, and I said, someday I got to do it. And that time came down and said, you know what, I'm going to do it. So let me, let me talk to Rick and see if I have his blessing. And, and I was so happy that you guys blessed me to be able to say, you know what, Go, and, go and, and live your life. You still have a lot of life to live and experience things. You have time to fail and bounce back. And, and of course, that happened. You know, you go out sure. and real life, you know, real life happens and <laughs> you fall and you bounce back and you get back up again. But you have to go through that. That's learning. And that was my case. And that's exactly what I really wanted to do. And I'm so glad because I was able to, to grow and build even more after leaving Alabama. Even when you told us that, I even pulled you aside, like maybe the day before you left. I said, D, seriously, are you serious you want to do this? And you were like, look, I said, you said this is great, but this is all I know. I got to know some more things. I got to know what's out there. So uh, we were happy for you. We hated that you left, but we were happy for you. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, it was it was all a learning experience, and I think about it as as life. There's phases, and I believe it or not, I, it's from, it's funny for me because I talk to young people a lot, and I tell them, and I try to, and I feel like that old old uncle that's trying to help people because I always say, you know what, you know, let me give you some advice, let me give you some tips, let me help you so you won't fail like I did. Let me tell you what you need to do, and you know, I love giving advice, you know. 
So when I do that, I look at it from the perspective of the way you guys were with me. You know, I'm like, I feel like I'm the Rick and Bubba to a lot of people, you know, now. So it's just like that advice you give. Uh, you can always just go further in life by listening to those that have been successful and, and did it before you, you know. Yeah, I, I I had no doubt in my mind, and Bubba, I'm like you. I I would just didn't like breaking up the team, you know. And, no, I know. And, I'm and like, man. Because, because we all had it like we liked it, but uh, but I yeah. think, but 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 I think no, you get to the point, honestly. And you know, I know Speedy's went through this before, but he's he's you know he's decided for him, you know this this is going to work, and and it might even end up working all the way to the point that we're all done. We don't know, uh, but but I think sometimes you realize, all right, I'm part of this team. But, you know, Rick and Bubba, unless one of them dies, uh, there's only going to be a Rick and a Bubba. So if I want to try to move up the ladder, I'm going to have to go out and, and, and try some other things. I'm, I'm kind of getting yeah. where I'm you, – certainly you could have ended up making a little more money or maybe as we went on, but you were never going to be the number one, number two guy until the number one, two guy left, you know, or, or passed away. Yeah. And so you got to have to decide. Now, some people have no problem of saying, I, I, I don't mind. I don't have to be – Number one or number two, I'm I'm fine with just riding alone. But I could sense in you what you just said, and Bubba just confirmed. You needed to go out and try other things. And I know that you had some ups and downs. We all do. But there was never a moment that Bubba uh, or, or or me, neither one of us, I never worried that you wouldn't land on your feet because of what we said before. I knew that you would do whatever you had to do to make it happen. Exactly, exactly. The, it, like you mentioned the work ethic and things like that. I, like I watched you guys, you know, not all the time things are going to go in your favor. Not all the time things are going to work out perfectly, but they do work in due time by sticking it out, toughing it out. And and you see you get, you know, where you guys have gotten. And, and like I said, my success so far, you know, I may not be as successful, but I look at it as being a success to me of uh, coming from where I came from to where I am now. No doubt well, about it. it. Rick, at one time, Don Juan and I were going to break off and do our own show, but the name Big D and Bubba was already taken. I remember that. So we, taken, just, we just I scrapped the plans, you know. And... <laughs> yeah. so... now, DeMarco, do you, when you're talking to the young people, <clears throat> do you ever give them advice on maybe stories you had heard about from other interns when you were there, like dating two girls with the same first name or something like that? I Gosh. mean, do you ever – you ever give them advice on things like that? Yeah, I, I, I hear stuff like that all the time, and believe it or not, that stuff still happens. But I say, hey, look, you're never gonna, you're never gonna win that way. <laughs> you're never gonna. Cause that's you, not gonna work. Listen, yeah, eventually you'll get out. your Tanya's confused. You know? it, it was what was the, what was the name? What was the name? Was Latoya? What was the name? Latoya. I will Latoya. never ever forget. Mr. Williams, I will never forget because, you know, we we'll, we'll we'll always pull back the curtain and show the business. When we first started out, we were on a radio station that was a 100,000 watt FM station that was in a small town, but, 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 but it covered multiple small towns. I mean, it covered, you could literally like do a remote in one county and then have another remote that, that is just as popular with the show two counties over. You know, it just had that kind of coverage, and it covered a lot of rural Alabama, which included all kinds of communities. And Don Juan brilliantly, brilliantly thought he could date two women at the same time with the same name and even give them shout-outs on the show. But then there was a parade. I forget where we that were. That was some other intern. It wasn't It wasn't Don Juan, Rick. It was some other intern he was talking about. Okay, well, maybe it was some other intern. But there was this person, and I, I remember <laughs> – I, I remember. I even changed his name to try to cover. <laughs> yeah, for it. I remember so vividly. Well, these these women don't care about D anymore. They they were mad so mad at him that night. They never want to talk right. to him again. Yeah, th- but, those don't. Those don't. Those don't. That's true. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Nobody. Surely they're not listening to this. But anyway, it's a podcast. It's not like we're on there. But anyway, so so I was. I, I, we got into some parade. We were in some parade. You remember all them parades we used yeah, to do? It was in Jackson. Yeah. yeah, and and you came over to me, and you know you're light skin, but at this time you were almost Caucasian, and uh, and and you were and you were you were because you were you were so worried. You're like, hey, hey, and I'm like, what's going on? And you were like, they're both here. And uh, we, problem. <laughs> we, we got a problem and we, we had forgotten how much ground the old show had covered. <laughs> and, and it's like every, they both knew where you were going to be. Oh, my goodness. I felt so bad for you if I could stop. If I could have stopped laughing. I think you were hiding in the back of the van. 
Best and, I remember. Just, just a preference, like I didn't mean for that to happen. That kind, that was one of those situations where, like, I kind of it just kind of happened. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still, I'm still the young dumb kid at that time. Of really. course, like, I'm oh, yeah. still the young. Sure. And I'm not, you know, you're not thinking things through, and you're not realizing things. And sometimes, if you if you're going to end something, you need to really end it before you move on. You know. <laughs> yeah. um, so and, well, or, sometimes or you, you, you get caught up in a handle, and it's like yeah. you know, it just. I, you know, <laughs> well, what it was. That's exactly what happened. Well, sometimes breakups really get confusing if your new person has the same name as the one you're trying yeah, to ease, yeah. ease away from. <laughs> that that you gotta be careful. I think I think the, the one day the shout out uh, gave a shout out, um, <laughs> and the one that I gave the shout out to because the other one I was like she she's not listening of course, yeah. but I gave a shout out and she actually heard it and it was it wasn't actually intended for her. But she actually heard it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, well, well, Wow. Um, I'm at the parade. So, so she's alert. So she is listening. <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, you know, at old times, you know, they're, they're all behind us now. Uh, all, the, all behind. Uh, the old, big D, did you? D uh, that's right. Back in the day. That's old D. It's, it, this is entrepreneur yeah. mature D now. That's D, old. How much did you love the pep rally tour? Wasn't that fun? I tell you what, like, that was the time of my life. Like, I'm like, this is awesome. Like, you mean we're going to come in here and this entire school is going to be rocking and rolling and jamming and dancing because of us? That's awesome. You know, we got a whole school stadium just bopping. So that was so much fun, guys, being able to do that. And, and special appearances by um, Helium Boy and Pete yeah. the Potbelly Poke Blam Pig and, and all of that. It was just hilarious. You know, <laughs> the the time that uh, that Aaron Boy was dressed up as uh, – uh, what he, was it? Helium boy. Uh, helium boy. Yeah, helium boy. <laughs> and he went down that hill <laughs> rolling and arms and legs and gloves were flying off. And I, I was on all fours. I couldn't breathe. I could not breathe. I don't know how he didn't kill himself going down that cliff. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. If we'd oh had video God. of that, if we'd had video I of that, we could have won $10,000. Oh, yeah. We, we need, I need to see the video of that, man. That was awesome. Because nobody that had video funny. then because nobody had phones. Yeah, and in those days... <laughs> In those days, we would dress up interns. We had a pig suit, and we would send y'all into the other studios, and then y'all would pop out and scream Rick and Bubba, and and uh, we just had we had all kinds of things. Do you remember? And I told this at home because I realized that my kids uh, they don't remember things even though they were alive then because they were either so small or then some of them weren't born yet. And and I started talking about the Million Pound March. And, and 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 my kids were like, Dad, that didn't happen. I said it one hundred percent happened. No, it and 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 that's when for the for me, you remember that when I talked about some of the themes that I said, no, no, we just we we, we, we were going to get a million pounds of people. So all we did was get a bunch of fat people till we fell out. We were at a million pounds, and I said, and we were threatening, we were threatening the city government that if they didn't drop the occupational tax, we were going to march one block. Turn left, eat pizza, and jump in the Coosa River and flood the city. <laughs> hey, we had a crowd out there. Rick, we passed, we passed three million pounds. I mean, it was easy. That's oh, funny. that was funny. That's funny stuff, that, man. You don't, you don't hear funny stuff like that now. No. That's funny. No, I mean, look, we didn't, we didn't have a woman under two twenty-five. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but what's funny is the do you part. Remember the, do you remember do you the remember? stack of empty pizza boxes when it was over? Man, let me tell you, needed, we like needed a, a front end loader to come clean that when, thing up. When that march, when that march started, it went half a block and turned left and ate. <laughs> All of us in them yellow shirts. <laughs> that bull, that bullhorn, that bullhorn out front. We shall overeat. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. A waste is a terrible uh, thing to mind. Oh, that was good. Oh, we did. We those did, were the days. But we would Man. we would do anything. I mean, there, I mean, yeah. you know, nowadays you come up with idea like that. And everybody's so old. They're like, I don't want to hassle with that. But, <laughs> but, but we do a full blown production. I mean, it, 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 you don't hear, you don't hear good funny stuff like that now. And, and 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 you guys started it, and and everybody loved it, and. And now I expect that from like other radio shows and I hear other radio st- shows and I, I see other radio shows and I've been a part of other radio shows with WSB. And it's like, I'm always wanting to bring like the funny aspect like you guys did, you know, cause I think that everybody needs to do that. But being a part of a lot of the shows that, that I've been a part of has been a lot of, uh, you know, uh, you know, your politics. So it's, it hasn't been the funny and the laugh. And uh, it's funny. I was a part of a show uh, a few weeks ago I'm sitting there and, and we're something's funny and we're cutting up and we're laughing. 
and and my laugh, of course, gets out of hand. Of course, you guys know that. Sure. Um, the the next phone call we received was from a guy who asked me, "Hey, are you Don Juan?" Because really, I used to listen to Rick and Bubba back in the day, and, and he funny. recognized the laugh. And it's just odd. Yeah, I live in Atlanta now. You know. I know so it is funny that we don't have funny shows and funny stuff like that now. <laughs> yeah, man, we're, we could use the laughs we're having today. And if you want to laugh, think about this. We need those laughs. We need those laughs. So, yes. I, so I'm on a conference call with Legal Zoom, you know, that's, that's teaming up with Rick and Bubba. And everybody got to laughing, Bubba. I was talking to the person, and they were talking to me about Legal Zoom. They said, they said, oh, look, you know, th- this is set up for these. And I said, you know, I need to update my wheel. And I said, let me tell you this if I can use Legal Zoom, and I successfully update my will. It will be the greatest endorsement LegalZoom yeah. has ever known. And yeah. uh, and there, and I said, you don't understand. I said, if you go to our staff and tell our team that I'm going to do my own will on LegalZoom, they will laugh so hard they won't hear. They will not hear the commercial. I but, may end up with a bronze medal sprinting at the Olympics. <laughs> so LegalZoom is with us now, Bubba. <laughs> and uh, look, we, it's a new world out there. A lot of challenges. Maybe you've been wondering about the best way to protect your family, or maybe you're thinking about starting a business like Dee's talking about, uh, but you just don't know the best way to do it. Well, don't let legal questions hold you back. LegalZoom has been dedicated to helping you with the right solutions for more than 19 years. Now, if you're looking to protect your family with a will, like I was talking about, or a living trust, or you're thinking about the right way to start business, or uh, with a DBA, an LLC, a nonprofit, or more, LegalZoom's got you covered, and it's easy to get started online. And if you need guidance, their network of attorneys can, attorneys can provide advice and make sure that you make the right choices. Since LegalZoom isn't a law firm, firm you also don't have to leave your home. And, and how about this? You won't get charged by the hour. So you don't have to worry about that as well. So all you have to do now is visit LegalZoom.com today. Take care of some important things you need to get done. And for special savings, be sure to use the code Rick Bubba. Rick Bubba at checkout. That's LegalZoom.com. Code Rick Bubba. LegalZoom where life meets legal. And they said they could help me to do it, too. So if they can help me, they can help anybody. So anyway, so, D, you were talking about uh, the fact that, uh, you know, you could be in a conversation, even in an area where you think, I wonder how many Rick and Bubba <laughs> folks are here, and they always turn up. Are you surprised that no matter where you go, there there will be a Rick and Bubba uh, supporter? I, find, I see them all over the world. Yeah, they're, they're all over the place, and especially Atlanta. Atlanta's not that far from you guys, so a lot of people from uh, from the area where we came up from live in the Atlanta area now. So I, I, I get a lot of people. We were even on, you know, on television in Atlanta for a period of time because I have a lot of people with co-workers like, oh, you're that guy that was on Rick and Bo. You know, so yeah, I hear that a lot. Like, they hear the laugh or they'll see the bald head and put two and two together and say, hey, you're, you're you done one? You know, yeah. so it's kind of crazy to still hear that all these years later. All right, the other thing that you're known for, and I promise you, I'm not exaggerating, I will get an email about this or to just be brought up in a conversation at least once a month. I don't know how many times Family Feud is rerunning you with oh, Steve no. Harvey. On how family many families feud. are you with? I think D, I've seen you a lot with three different families. D, that 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 episode runs all the time. If there was some type of residuals I could get from that episode, that thing is on all the time. I get a random tweet or a text message or something every time from all over the country when that thing is on, and it airs a lot. It does. <laughs> well, I was talking with a friend of mine just this past Tuesday night, and he was. we were all laughing about what the COVID-19 routine has done to all of us. And he said, oh, yeah, and I, I'm talking about I'm now we're just living the life of senior citizens now. And so, and so, so he was talking about this. He said, "Oh yeah." He said, "Now our routine is from I know from six to seven that we're going to watch Family Feud." Yeah. And, and so I said, "I said, have you seen? We do too. I said, about every night. I said, have you seen Don Juan yet?" And he and he's and he and he said to me, he said to me, "No, I haven't." I said, "Well, you will if if you stay yeah. with if you stay with it, you're going to see it." And, uh, I get a random screenshot sent to me, but and I'm like, "Oh, there I am." Yeah, so that that's that's run a lot. How, did y'all win any money? I can't remember. We didn't win on that show, but we, my sister and I, uh, was fortunate enough also to be a part of another game show uh, called Celebrity Name Game, and we did win that one. So it was fun. Congratulations! How do you so, end up, how do you end so up on these shows? With, with, with the, yeah, I see the on all these programs. So when you get the money, do they take the taxes out, or did you have to pay a bunch? How does that work? We've always heard horror. No, stories. no, you have to submit that with your taxes. 
Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I know, and I yeah. know you did, and yeah. and all's good. Well, thank goodness he has legal. And, 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 and if you don't, and if you don't, you'll you'll still have to eventually. Just, yeah. just a heads up. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. No like one. Said, sometimes you learn the hard way. So yeah. 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 <laughs> no wonder so they, they give you a check and they send another thing over to the IRS, right? Yes, exactly, yeah. and that's yeah. how it works. So you can't forget. There's no no. You can't forget. No. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder D was trying to chime in on the legal Zoom commercial. Yeah, uh, but anyway. <laughs> So D, we got about three minutes. I know there's people that that, have, that you know we get the emails. Uh, man, we want to hear from Don Juan. What's going on with Don Juan? You got an update on Don Juan? And I'm like, well, yeah, yes, I do. So uh, a lot of them are, are are watching or listening to this episode right now, and they would love to be able to keep up with what you're doing. And I know with the days of social media, you can really keep in touch. Now that can be good and bad, uh, but uh, yeah. uh, it, it, which explains why you've blocked two women named Latoya. But let's talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> so but 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 if people are wanting to say all right i want to follow d here or there what he's doing i want to know about what he's doing with la fitness i want to know all the things don one how can they how can they find you well i, I have to give a shout i'm gonna give a shout out to all the people already there are tons and tons and tons of listeners of the rick and Bubba show who already follow me uh keep up with me as far as uh, twitter and instagram facebook all the social media platforms so all those people who always are chiming in, every time I post a throwback Thursday picture of us, you know, they'll they'll chime in and tell me they missed my laugh and all that stuff. Shout out to all you guys. They've always continued to show the love over the years um, of me not being there. And uh, so I'll give a big shout out to those guys. But all on social media platforms, if you were to type in It's DeMarco, one word, I-T-S-D-E-M-A-R-C-O, It's DeMarco, you'll find me. Instagram, Twitter. Facebook, all that. It's demarco.com also. Well, good. I hope you enjoy keeping up with people that you've met. Look at that branding. I love it. I love it. Well, he's, look, he's I, learned. I, I, I learned it from you guys. I learned everything from you. So proud of you. I, 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 I've got wet eyes right now. I'm so proud. <laughs> hey, 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 note and that don't happen much. I know D Bubba, Bubba claims that I had my tear ducts removed as a small child. If you yeah, ever, he I said, mean, he but, said he's never seen me cry ever one time. There'll be some video come in, you know, and no telling what it is, something horrible. And everybody in there's got a tear in their eye, and Rick doesn't. Even Greg, you know. So I, I think Rick had his tear ducts took out. <laughs> but D, D, I'll get a good laugh at you. Bubba says he thinks that I could sit there and watch him take a baby penguin and put it in a blender and grind it up into nothing, and I'd just sit there and wouldn't even, wouldn't even have a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, D, I'm gonna ask you one more question. I know we got to wrap up. We we captured your laugh right before you left, and we we play it back a lot. You did that. I whispered something in your ear. Bubba. That was your laugh. I don't guess you won't tell everybody what it was, D. I, I don't. I, I, I can't. I know. <laughs> I can't say what it is, but I tell you what, it, it got me going. It's funny, it, wasn't it? It, it was funny. I, 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 I knew, I knew where to put the where to drop the bomb down the smokestack for yeah. maximum <laughs> laughter. And let me work. tell you what, I've never met a man in my life that loves a good one more than you. I promise you. I'm telling you. So, I'm telling you, I, I, I could go every day laughing at something, and, and everybody asks me all the time, now why are you always laughing? Why are you always so upbeat? And I can't let all the craziness that's going on in the world and everything just bring me down. I got to stay at a level where I'm happy and, and joyful and blessed every single day. And, Amen. and, and that's how I feel everybody should. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks. We for, miss you, man. We do miss you. We love you. We're proud of you. Give and touch, uh, and, and keep in touch. And, uh, and we thank you for taking time to be with us on this edition, a Where Are They Now edition of Rick and Bubba University. <laughs>